What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to do a live coding challenge where I recreate the classic brick breaking game breakout in Python using Pygame live under an hour. So before I begin, huge shout out to Tech with Tim. He has a great Python tutorial page on YouTube and I saw his Minesweeper in one hour live coding challenge video. I thought it was a really great way to showcase how writing code on the fly and debugging errors as they arise really feels since a lot of tutorials on YouTube are pretty polished and edited by the time they get to YouTube. It doesn't necessarily reflect the real experience of creating complicated programs. So good job, Tim. Thanks for the inspo. Thank you for watching the video. Before we dive into it, please subscribe, do it, join the coolest 447 people on the internet, and I will personally deliver high quality Python tutorials to your YouTube feed weekly. Anyway, I chose Breakout because almost everyone else has played this game in one form or another, and because the basic form of the game is pretty simple, but there are lots of opportunities to make it more advanced. So I thought it'd be a great challenge, but also pretty doable. If you want a copy of this code yourself, the GitHub link will be in the description. A link to Tim's video will be in the description, as well as a link to the channel will be in the description. So check those out if you want, enjoy the tutorial, and let me know if you have any questions or want to see anything in a future video in the comments below. Thanks, enjoy. All right, let's do this. It's 1.42 p.m., so we'll give ourselves until uh, 2.42 p.m. to get however far we can. I think we can build a pretty good um, version of Breakout in that time, but let's just see how far we get. So uh, to start, I'm going to do kind of all the things I do in every one of my long-form tutorials, uh, pygame.time.clock. And I'm going to do it pretty quickly, so uh, if I don't explain it as well as I normally would, check out any of the other long-form tutorials and uh, I'll explain kind of why I put all these things in the beginning and you can kind of get your questions answered there or just ask why I do something in a certain order in the comments because once I post this video the time is obviously off um, so while run so you can get all your questions in there so we'll do timer dot tick at our FPS and we will do Let's just do the event handling right now for event in pygame.event.get. And whoops, I did not put in. In event.get. If event.type is equal to pygame.quit, all caps, <laughs> then run equals false. Okay. And now I really just want to do kind of the bare minimum. Uh, to get pygame.display.flip to get the game to where it runs and showing on the screen and then from there uh, I think I called it clock it should do timer um, to, once I get it on the screen so we'll do screen.fill and we'll make a few colors here real quick too so white is all of the color <laughs> and then black and gray just so we have a few options while we draw the initial stuff. One, two, eight, one, two, eight, one, two, eight. Okay. And so let's see, that should be screen.fill. We haven't made a screen yet. That would be a good thing to do. Well, um, I'm thinking we make this about the size of like a phone game. Cause I, that, at least for me, that's how I grew up playing uh, breakout was on like a mobile device. So then screen equals pygame.display.set mode. And then all this needs is a width and a height. And I think it's square brackets. We'll see when we load it in if we've done something horribly wrong, but I'm hoping this gives us a window. Yeah, that's a little too tall though, isn't it? Uh, it looks pretty good, but too tall. How <laughs> I made that uh, 1200, let's just do 900. See how that looks. That's pretty good, that's what I want. Okay, um, so I'll make this font a little bit bigger. Hopefully if you wanna follow along, uh, it just makes it easier to see. Let's go ahead and draw the player on the screen. And so we'll say player is gonna be equal to pygame.draw.rect. And then we'll put it on the screen. Let's make the player black since we've got a great background. That should show up pretty well. 
and uh, I'm going to give it the rectangular coordinates of a variable player x that we'll have to go and define. Um, for player y, I think let's just make it height minus like 30 so that it'll be off the bottom of the screen. Let's do height minus 20. So it'll be off the bottom of the screen. And then for width, we've got, um, we can play around with this, but we've got a width of 500, so 120, 150, somewhere in that dimension should be good. And then for how tall to make it, let's make it like 18 or 15, just so that it's off the bottom of the screen. And then we'll make it solid, and I'm gonna make it a rounded rectangle because those look sweet. And let's just make an initial player X value that'll put it somewhere around the middle of the screen. 500 divided by 2, 250, minus 60 to put it 190 that should put the player right around the middle of the screen and let's just draw a ball initially that's going to be pi game dot draw dot circle we'll put that on the screen we'll make it white and all this needs is an x and y uh for its radius or for its center we'll make two new variables we'll call them ball x and ball y and then we'll give it a radius of 10 so ball x uh, we can probably make just width divided by two and then that would put it right at the middle. And then ball Y, we want it to kind of be hovering right above this platform. So height minus 20 plus 10, we'll make that height minus 30. That should look pretty good. Let's see if we've got a ball and a paddle. We do, and that looks pretty sweet. So next thing, how about we make um, just a board? And this is probably not how we'll leave it, but uh, I'm just gonna scramble and make a board that has five rows initially. And what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll make um, the board essentially, anytime the ball hits a spot on the board, we'll subtract one from that board spot. And then once you get down to zero, that'll show that you, uh, that'll show that you totally eliminated the rectangle. And so the game will basically get played until the uh, board is uh, all zeros. Okay, so let's do that. And then to get the board actually drawing on the screen, let's go ahead and create a function that I'll call draw board. And I think we will want to pass in board. There we go. And let's just come above our game loop and make that function. So define draw board. And uh, let's go ahead and say here, we want to pass in the board. So we'll say board. Uh, it maybe isn't best practice to use board again here but it's not going to hurt anything so we'll say for i in range and then length of board so the length of board is going to tell us how many rows are in the board and then we'll say for j in range and then length of board at i so i know we made it all uniform five and i think that'll look the best anyways but this is going to procedurally draw the board regardless of how many pieces are in it and then what we'll say is pygame.draw.rect and we'll put it on the screen. And I actually want to color code the rectangles. So I'm going to make a list called colors and I'm going to have it uh, look up the position of board at I, J. So essentially I want a colors dictionary that's going to go from one to five to say how tough the thing, uh, a colors list that's going to say one to five, how tough the thing to break is going to be. And then we're going to draw a different color based on that. So we'll make the colors list next, but let's think about where we want these on the screen. If we say that every row is going to be five pieces wide, then the X position um, can just be J times 100. And then the Y position can be I times however thick we want to make them. So 40 would probably look good. So let's just do 40 as a beginner. How wide we want to make it, um, let's just say 100 for now. And then let's say, well, that's going to look bad. Let's put a little gap in there. Let's say 98 for now and 38, um, just to see what that gives us. And now let's make a list of colors here. So I think to make it um, maybe moderately rainbow, we'll do like red, orange, green, blue, purple as we count down. Of course, now we got to make those. Um, and here's where if you're not real familiar with RGBs, you might want to red, what I say next, orange. Um, you might need to play around a little bit with these, uh, but I don't really have time. So I hope I get close. I think orange is like red, some green and no blue, um, green, is obviously pretty easy r g b blue is going to be zero zero 
255. And you know what? I definitely should have put up here started 1.42 p.m. Because uh, there's no way I'm going to remember that off the top of my head. Okay, so uh, blue and I think what I say purple. So purple is going to be like some red and some blue. If by a miracle I'm done early, we can come back and tweak these colors later. But these will give us stuff to play with. But actually, um, if you're seeing what I did here, I said the number of like bricks remaining before you finished it. And so colors at that index, we would want to do this plus one, um, I think. So let's see if that draws a board. Two, two, two. List index out of range. Colors, board, IJ. Oh, right, right, right. Minus one. Let's check that out. Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. So you can see these top bricks are going to take five to break. And then as you go farther down, they're only going to take one to break. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. So let's kind of start building in how to play the game and then we can kind of tweak the style later if we want to. So um, to start the game, I'm gonna set this variable that I'm making active equal to false and we're gonna put in some new events. So if event.type is equal to pygame dot, uh, it's, it's button down, but it is keyboard, key, key down. There we go, I knew it was in here. Um, if uh, event dot key is equal to pi game dot k space and not active. So we'll use the space bar when the game is not active to start the game. So we'll say active equals true. Now we're gonna say if event dot key is equal to, and we'll use the left and right keys uh, to control where the player goes. So we'll say and active. So now we're only gonna let you move the paddle if, if active, but we'll say player direction is equal to one. So that'll be to the right. And then we'll say if event.key is equal to pi game dot k underscore left and it's active, then we'll say player direction is equal to negative one. And let's go ahead and just take this whole section and we'll kind of modify it here for what we want to do on release. So opposite of key down is key up. We'll get rid of the space bar. And then we'll say if the key is right and it's active, then the direction is equal to zero. And actually we won't worry about and active because if you release the right key, it should stop you moving or the left key. Um, and now what we'll do so that that's continuous is we'll say that uh, the player X that we made, so the where the rectangle is getting drawn, plus equals and then player direction times player speed. So we'll make a new variable here, player speed, that'll control how fast the player can go. Um, and this is a good way to adjust how difficult your game is. So player speed and we'll set equal to eight cause I like moving kind of fast here. And let's see, that should be all we need to do. Uh, player direction is not defined right. Define that up in the beginning too player direction and when we load in the game we'll just make it zero so you're not moving all right so right now I can't move the paddle left or right but I hit the space key and now I can and it looks pretty good feels pretty smooth all right so I think it's time to get the ball moving so we'll need a few new variables for that we'll want to say uh, and the ball is going to move in the X and the Y direction so we'll want ball X direction to be equal to zero when the game starts up and we'll say ball y direction also equal to zero when the game starts and then we'll say uh ball x speed and i'm gonna do ball x speed and ball y speed as two different variables because um, i think in normal breakout you can actually change the x speed and y speed by which direction you collide with the platform and so i want to get to that hopefully i have time in this uh one hour um, so let's see here. So, all right, we've got X direction, Y direction, uh, X speed and Y speed for the ball. So what do we want to say? Once active, let's go ahead and say that we also want the ball Y direction to be equal to, and should we say, we should probably say negative one is up because of the Pi game coordinate system. So we'll say ball Y direction is equal to minus one. And then let's say ball Y plus equal uh, ball y direction times and we want to say ball 
y speed. And then we'll say ball x uh, plus equal ball x direction times ball x speed. And these are going to get tweaked as we get a little more into it. But uh, we need to also initialize the ball going off in one direction or another. So let's say ball x direction is going to be equal to, and we'll say random.rand. Actually, I think it's random.choice. Yep. And then we give it a little list here, and it can either be uh, left or to the right. So I guess it would look better as minus one or one. Um, but no matter what, you'll move in the left direction or the right direction. Uh, and so far, this is, is going to, as soon as I press space, I'm pretty sure the ball is going to disappear. Yeah, pretty rapidly. Um, but you can see it move off in the right direction. So let's go ahead and let's do bouncing off the X and right walls first, because I think that'll be a little bit easier. Again, I would put a lot of this in little sub functions if I wasn't um, racing against the clock, but I am. So I'm just going to do it the fastest way I can think of. So what we'll say here is if ball X, uh, so if it's position plus speed, mm, let's just say if ball X is less than or equal to less than or equal to 10, then we want uh, ball X direction times minus one. So basically if it hits the left wall, we want to flip and then let's say uh, or ball x is greater than or equal to what would be width minus 10. So that means the ball has gotten to the point of the left wall and the right wall. And let's see if we can get it bouncing left and right now. So left wall looks good. Right wall looks good. Obviously didn't collide with the platform yet. Um, but I think that looks pretty good. So we'll just leave that for now because really that's all we need to control the left and right directional bounce. Um, and let's start taking a look at what should change the Y direction. So what we'll want is if player dot collide, mm, let's do ball collide. So if the ball dot collide rect with the player paddle, so now um, this is going to be one way that we want to change the y direction. So we'll say ball y direction uh, times equals minus one. And now to make it easy, uh, I think from our draw board, we'll want to return all those rectangles so that we can check and see if, uh, if anything um, collided. So let's return something that we'll call squares and we'll return uh, I'll call it board squares in the function just so it's obvious what's different about it. And what I would like to do inside of this function is um, every time we call it, we will make a new empty list called board squares and spell it right if we can. Squares as seconds I wasn't counting on wasting in how to spell. And what we'll do is we'll do board dot squares or <laughs> underscore squares uh, dot append and let's just add uh, I'll call this guy piece so this is the piece and we'll append the piece so that we can check it but then I also want to put something else in this append that we do um, I'd like to put in a tuple that is the IJ coordinates so in the outside world we have the I and the J coordinates of each piece so that we are able to decrement the board at that piece when we um, collide with it. So that'll make sense once we do this next piece, but we do need to make sure. So squares is what we've got. What we want to do is say for I in range length of squares. So we have this list of all of the squares and we want to check if ball dot collide rect with what is going to be at squares I, but then it's also the first item inside of I because I is going to be a tuple. Squares I is going to return a tuple. The first one's going to be a rectangle. The second one's going to be a coordinate. Um, so it would be just like this. So if ball collide rect, then the first thing we want to do is we want to say, and you know what? I think this would be easier if we return it as a list. So append. Uh, can we do that? That should be fine. I don't really know that that would be better or worse than what I just did. Let's see if it works. Uh, this is what I have in mind. So if the ball collides with any of those rectangles, then first thing we'll do is we'll just flip the Y direction. 
Uh, and actually, I'm thinking we're going to have to flip either the X or the Y direction, depending on whether you collide with a square from the left and right or from the top and bottom. But we'll take care of that in a second. First, let's just get this sorted out. Because the second piece we want to do is say board at, and then the first piece of that is going to be squares I1. And then I think we can do this. So the first one would be zero. And then we want this same piece here, control C, control V, but then one, and we want to subtract one from it. So let's see if that's legit. Hopefully we can bounce up and down now. Oh, the board did not draw correctly. Figure out that in a second. I'm sure I did something stupid. Okay, for I in range, for J in range. Oh, yes, we want to do row equal to, hmm, that would probably be the right way to do it, wouldn't it? Let's make a new blank row for each of uh, each I, and then let's add each of these entries to the row. Uh, we want to return board squares outside of the for loop. That might have been it. But then we'll do board squares dot append each row and we'll do that outside of this for loop. So um, we want to draw the board that way. Let's just start it up and print the board. That may work, but let's just print the board so that I can see or actually print squares so I can see what we're returning real quick. Let's just run this real quick. Argument must be rect style object, right? We're going to have to change it now. Uh, so, but you can see each item inside of our list. We've got by row, but we actually don't need that now. Um, so let me, let me get rid of these sets of brackets. And then we're going to have board squares. Uh, each I is going to tell us how many rows. And then we'd have J. So I actually don't think we want to do the rows. I think that was a step in the wrong direction, Pete, you dummy. So we will just say board squares dot append and that should catch every piece. And let's just try that now. List dot append takes exactly one argument. I know that. So let's say it's a tuple actually that should be fine this is uh taking a minute all right the board looks okay i'm printing that thing which isn't great let's just start it all right bounce up bounce down hey but it did go from red to purple and purple i think is supposed to be five and red's supposed to be one Let's see if I can get one to hit a second time here. It is at least bouncing back to us, which is good. Um, but those, I think, should be going to zero. Oh, except we don't have any condition in here. So, aha, uh -huh. smart. Not smart, but <laughs> what we want to do is say if board at i j greater than zero. Um, so this should take care of... This should take care of once we hit a piece it should just go invisible so let me see let's run that I should just have to hit one piece i've got a bunch of ugly stuff there we go and maybe i'll be able to get through to the second row now and i should be able to knock them down to red so we're doing okay on time we're about 20 minutes in um all right let me see can we hit can we hit can we hit something in the second row, please? All right, it goes to red. That looks pretty good. Um, I'd ordinarily probably test it a little bit more at this step, but uh, we don't need that print statement anymore. Um, what I think we do need to do, though, is we need to return the left edge, right edge, top edge, and bottom edge because uh, you're actually going to be able to collide a piece in a few different ways, and we don't want to flip its Y direction in any case. We want to do it only if it hits it from the bottom or the top. So I think maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but we're going to define some rectangles. Top, bottom, left, and right. And this is going to be pi game 
dot rect dot rect. So for this, it's a little different than doing draw dot rect. We are just going to go um, in here and basically grab our coordinates for this rectangle. And we're going to kind of shave off the thing into just a few rectangles. Um, but the normal way to do rec dot rect is two tuples, one for the uh, starting position and then one for the width and height. So let's see, the top of it, we're going to want to keep J times 100 and I times 40. Those are going to be the same, but uh, we'll also keep the same width, but we'll just make it a height of one. So this is going to be a super skinny rectangle at the top. And then bottom, uh, we've made it 38 high. So this will be I times 40, but then we'll add 38 to it or 37 because it'll be one thick. Um, so that'll be a skinny little rectangle at the bottom. And then the left rectangle, uh, the starting position will be the same, but then we're going to want to make it 37 tall, but only one wide. So that looks good. And then the right rectangle. So we're basically pulling off edges, but, but still making them rectangles so that we're able to do uh, pi game, uh, dot collide rect, which is a nice built in collision detection tool. So, J times 100, and then we will add the width of the thing. So it's 97, and then we will make it 37 tall and one wide. Okay, so I think that's sweet. We need commas between these two tuples. And what I want to do now is I actually want to, instead of these being uh, tuples, I would like to return, let's just do it in this same order, top, bot, left and right okay so now top bot left right we don't actually need this piece but i'm going to leave it as is for now if we go look at our squares we have top bottom left right and then coordinates uh and we're checking against that down here so i will say top bottom left right chords just so i don't forget so uh if we are colliding with squares at zero or so this is good Control C or, and we'll test this in a second. So top or bottom, then that means we want to flip the Y direction. But then if we're colliding with the left and right, which will be two and three, then we want to actually flip the X direction, but we still want to decrement the same piece. So this code can stay the same. And that hopefully should give us a lot more accurate, um, that should give us a lot more accurate uh, collision but let's go ahead and do, do, do. So right when the game boots up, we don't tell the player how to start the game. So why don't we say start text is equal to um, font.render and the text we want is spacebar to start the game. And we will do screen.blit and we'll put it um, start text, oops start text and then let's put this roughly in the middle of the screen so i'm guessing that's probably about a hundred maybe four hundred um and we only want to do this if not active and the reason i'm doing this now is i want to put in kind of the conditions for failure here pretty soon let's see a space bar I guess is two words so it starts up start text is font render function takes oh right right <laughs> this is uh not complete on its own uh, we also have to say true and then color for the text. We'll say black. Okay. Let's try that. Spacebar start the game. Yeah. So that's too far to the left. We'll go with 40. Maybe that'll look good. Uh, that looks okay. We're not going to worry about it too much now. So I hit space, start the game. Uh, we bounce up and list indexes out of range. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't update the coordinates. So this is no longer... Uh, I one zero. This is now gonna be what do we do? Zero one two three four zero. So four zero four one four zero four one. That should take care of that. And start the game. Okay. So we've got uh, red. We've got red. And a clever person watching the game right now is probably gonna pick up on the fact. I think this game is going to move exactly the same way every time because the way the player interacts with the ball, all they have to do is um, make sure to hit the ball 
but it doesn't impact the direction it's moving at all. Uh, so that's kind of a boring game. This is cool. I mean, I think we got fundamentally pretty close here. Um, that was kind of weird right there. It hit the bottom and it didn't flip. Uh, hit the bottom and it didn't like quit because we haven't put in losing conditions yet. Um, but let's see here. All right. All right, so we've got a decent core here going on. Um, but let's go ahead and put in some conditions for losing. So what we'll say is I think the biggest way you can lose is just um, if ball y is less than or equal to negative 10. And then we'll say active equals false. But then what we need to do, this is game over. So we also want to... Uh, we also want to reset everything's position. So I'm going to come up here and grab these initial things like X speed, Y speed, X direction, Y direction, player positions. I'm just going to copy all this down and actually the board too. So we're going to grab all of these. Everything except width and height. And uh, if the ball is less than or minus, is less than or equal to, uh, we want to do height minus 10 then we'll basically reset the game and that'll be how you lose. So let's see if I can test that real quick. I'll just, uh, oop, ball is less than or equal to height minus 10. Oh, it's gotta be greater than or equal to. After all that talk you do about knowing what the Pi game coordinate system is. All right, <clears throat> so I'll maybe rebound it once and let's let it hit the ground. And it resets the game, so that's pretty good. Uh, if you wanted it to sit on the bottom until you hit spacebar to reset it, then you could um, you could freeze the positions. You could set active equal to false, but not do all of this until the spacebar was hit. So you could put that up in the event handling for sure. I kind of like it like this. But let's do something that I'm pretty sure regular breakout does, which is if you collide with the ball while it's moving in a certain direction and you're going in the same direction, you can speed it up. And if you do the opposite, you can slow it down. So let's see if we can do that in this collide direct player stuff. Let's check if player direction is equal to ball direction. And so if player direction is equal to ball x direction, then let's add ball x speed plus equal one. And then let's say L if player direction is equal to negative ball x direction. So this would be you're going in opposite directions. And let's add a condition to this one because we never want going perfectly vertical. Um, and ball x direction is, or ball x speed. Ball x speed is greater than one. And so let's say uh, that means that it's at least two. Let's do ball x speed minus equals one and then let's do an l if and they're opposite and it's equal to one do, 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 do. and ball x speed is equal to one then let's do ball x direction and let's actually flip it so times equals minus one do, do, do. actually ball x yeah ball x direction there we go so now we're saying, okay, if you are the paddle and you hit the ball going the same direction, then let's speed it up. And if you're going opposite direction, slow it down. And if it's already going really slow and you hit in the opposite direction, you're actually gonna be able to change its direction using the X and Y uh, direction of the paddle. So let's see if that actually works. Okay. So I think I was able to hit it in the same direction there and it looked pretty good. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's definitely speeding up. Uh, horizontally. Let's see if I can slow it back down. Nope, I missed. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can slow it back down now. Yeah, that for sure slowed it down. Um, and that's going to change the way it's played every time, which is pretty cool. It gives the player a lot more control. Uh, and let's see if we can get to flip. It's probably at like two in the X direction right now. So it should be one. So I'm hoping when I hit this, it'll flip directions. Yeah, I think it did. I think it did there and I should be able to do it again. Yep. Yeah, it for sure flipped when I did that. So that's pretty cool. And then you can speed it up by going the same direction. That's really cool. It feels the way it's supposed to feel. Uh, let's add an element of score tracking to this. The best games are telling you what your score is at all times. So when we restart, 
we'll say score is equal to zero and then let's go down to resetting everything and we'll say score is equal to zero actually let's do that when active is pressed so you can still see your score after you die so um space and not active and we'll set reset the score there and what i'll do is i'll basically take this whole if not active statement and i'll add an if active statement and we'll put the score on screen so we'll say score text is equal to and let's make this a formatted string so that we can put score in there too score and then the score variable and then score text and let's put it like in the top left so x position of 10 and y position of like five would look cool this should be moderately out of the way it'll kind of be in the top uh it'll be in the first rectangle by a bit but it should be in one of the easiest places to avoid while the game is being played but we haven't done anything yet that's going to um increment your score so let's check when the ball collides with any of the squares that's what we want to count as one so we'll say score plus equal one in both of these and so now we should keep track of the score let's test that out spacebar to start looks pretty good um do 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 score two that's cool let's see now if i die um it should move everything back to starting positions oh it's not resetting the score but actually we don't need that if active we can show the score all the time so let's get rid of that and then let's um move those back here too many blank lines i guess i don't care about that um, so score zero let's go ahead and get one and then die it'll keep showing you the previous game score and then once i hit start it resets it so that's working perfectly i really like that um, i think we've done quite a lot of good things here if it hits the bottom we lose uh, i guess technically we haven't done anything for winning and we also haven't told it if it hits the top of the screen to bounce back down so let's do that let's see so if do 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 we have a few things checking if it goes off screen if ball x or ball y now let's see where where do we check if it hits the ground right here we should add we should add the checking if it hits the ceiling right above this so we'll say if ball y is less than or equal to 10 then we'll just want to ball y direction times equals minus one and actually before we even do that i think we should set ball y equal to 10 so that's basically saying if somehow because of speed we moved past 10 um we're gonna put it back to 10 so that it's not a problem where it's like bouncing back and forth above the screen uh and we should probably have done that here too but that's game over so it doesn't matter that should work uh let's see let's see let's see game over so we want game over to set it equal we want all of this but i guess it would be cool to have something if you won but doesn't really matter does it so um let's see game over is basically when squares is going to be empty because this list will have nothing left to draw when it's completely empty uh so why don't we check if squares let's just check if length of squares is equal to zero um and then let's do the actually let's just put it in here so or there and so this is saying now there's nothing left on the board uh ready or length of squares is equal to zero then we reset everything and i think that's pretty cool let's try that uh this would take a really long time to beat the game so maybe actually what i'll do is just um i will just make the initial board just a bunch of ones so and let's make a dummy board that's going to be equal to uh one 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 uh let's just make it three it's probably already going to be hard enough for me to hit three three ones let's see if that even craps out the system okay all right i want to see it hit the ceiling real quick and i'd like to finish the game and see it reset so let's see all right i might get lucky i might hit all of them hit the ceiling okay bouncing off the top is working that's good now come on hit the hit the last square 
Oh man, this can be the most frustrating part of actual breakout. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. All right, please, Pete, hit it quick because we are wasting precious time. Oh my God. All right, I'm just gonna make it one square. We're gonna do this. We're gonna beat the game with one square. That is cool though, once the game was over, it reset it to uh, reset to no squares. All right, I'm actually gonna have to use some skill here. It's not just gonna fall into my lap. This is really bad. Speed it up maybe. Oh my gosh, that's like exactly what I just did. This is the biggest waste of a coding challenge ever, but I hate to just assume my stuff is working because it takes a really long time to finish a game. This is so bad. <laughs> I even gave, uh, oh man, all right. I'm speeding up the X direction as much as I can because I would think the faster it's going the X direction, the better. But like there, I was going the opposite direction. Oh man, so bad. All right, come on. All right, if it doesn't if it doesn't get it in the next like two bounces, I will uh, I will legitimately call it. Come on, hit. Okay, all right, it reset. That's why I want to make sure we got a new game. Um, so the other piece is, look, the board is going to be exactly the same right now every time, which maybe that's what you want, especially if you do levels. You could create your boards pretty easily in this kind of format, and then you could make like a list of all the levels and just increment the levels, make them progressively harder. Or you could do what I think uh, I'm about to do and create a new function that's going to create a randomized board. So let's just start with board being an empty list and do, 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 let's make a new function right when this starts up. So even before we draw the board, let's say board is equal to, uh, and we'll say create new board. Hmm, create new board. That's a long function name, but uh, it's fine. We're going quickly. And we'll pass in the existing board, I guess. Actually, we don't even care about the existing board, so we'll just pass in the existing board. And we'll say if create new is true so we'll make a new variable that'll control when it's time to make a new board and so since the initial board is empty we'll want create new to be true right away and then when we do our reset which is in here rather than this uh, board we'll just say create new is equal to true okay and let's make the function that we called what do we call it create new board I think Mm -hmm. we're pretty good on time 40 minutes create new board okay so define create new board and we don't have to pass anything in but we do have to make sure we return a board so uh, let's go ahead and make it and what I think we should do is say um, all right board is initially empty and then let's say uh, rows. So how many rows we want to be will be random. Dot, and then we'll pick a random integer. I think we should have a minimum of four rows per level and maybe a maximum of eight. Uh, and then we'll say four I in range rows. We'll set, uh, we'll make this empty row. And then we'll say row dot append and we will pick a random dot rand int between one and five. So that's how many, that's what we just decided the thickest uh, block could be. And then for I in range rows, row is blocked, row append. Uh, oh, but then we want to do a for J in range and five because we want every row to be five. That's how it'll fill up the screen. So we'll want row to be empty up here. And then we'll want to say row dot append yeah, like this. And then in each out here, we'll want to say board.append each row. I think if I'm reading this correctly, then what we'll do first is we'll pick a random number of rows between four and eight. And then for each of those rows, we'll create an empty row. And then we'll go through and pick five random numbers and add those between one and five to each row. And then for each row that we create, we'll append to the board with that. So maybe that's bold, but let's see if it worked. That was a lot of code. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I don't think we ever turned create new off. So <laughs> that was sweet though. Uh, that would give you a headache to play with for sure. 
Um, so what we want to do is as soon as we create new, which we do 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 right here, we want to turn create new off so that we only ever do this once at a time. So create new is equal to false. And let's check that out. All right, this is definitely a random board. It doesn't look the same as the previous board and it's still, we can still play it and it obeys our rules. We're still getting a score, which is pretty cool. And all right, I'm not gonna spend too long playing the game, but I do just wanna see, okay. Uh, so the dynamics maybe are a little funky around the edges. Um, I'm not totally convinced that our left and right collision is working properly. The bottom and top definitely is. But let's see if we can pick that up again. I was looking and it kind of looked like it hit an edge and did the opposite of what we wanted it to do. But that's kind of a hard thing to catch because it hits the bottoms a lot more often than it hits the sides. <laughs> it's definitely fun and it's a little bit challenging, which is what you want out of a basic game. Just kind of a time waster game. All right, man, this is really hard to prove. Okay, well, we got a new board, and every time we die, actually, I'll go ahead and die here. We got four rows this time, and we got four rows again. Um, I think that first one that loaded in was five. Let's see. Yeah, this one's five. We should be able to get, like, seven or eight. Let's see here. It's random, so, yeah, there we go. We got six. That looks pretty good. You can clearly see it's uh, totally randomly generated, which is pretty sweet. Let me check out that X and Y, that side collision real quick. So if the player direction, if you're going left and the ball is going left, then we want to increase the speed. That's right. No, I said I was going to check on collision, didn't I? So if you collide with the left or the right edge, I think what we want to do is only change the direction you're going if you're going left and you collide with the right edge. So let me see here, because I think it may be possible if it hits right on a corner to um, be going left and hit the left edge and that should not flip you. So let's see, and ball X direction is equal to, and so this would be hitting the left edge, zero, one, two left edge and so if you hit the left edge of a square you would have to be going right and then let's say and or ball collides with a rectangle and you are going so this would be left and I guess we'll move that on to the next line since we have an or there um, although that shouldn't have erred so we might need a backslash here and then we just want, no, that should be fine. I think I did something goofy with my formatting. What the heck? Oh, did I not close a parenthesis? That's pretty likely. Yeah, close that parenthesis. Okay, that's why my formatting was a little jacked up. Didn't need that right now. Uh, so that looks okay. I think that's what we want to do though. I think we only want to let it collide. I mean, by the same token we should be doing, you can only hit the bottom if you're going up. Uh, but we're um, at like 45 minutes and I think we've got a pretty good game here. But what did I do? Argument must be, oh damn it. I, uh, I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, so that's squares and ball direction. I need to close this first and close this out here. That should do it. Stupid little formatting, trying to rush. All right, I don't actually know what I was hoping to get here. It's going to be too hard to test that, but I think that's an improvement. Um, let's go ahead and do some style upgrades. So, I mean, this is a pretty fun game right now. It's basically what I set out to accomplish. So for those keeping score at home, at 47 minutes, I said officially I feel like this version of Breakout is playable and fun. Um, but I think we can improve the style just by adding some outlines to things. And so let's go into our draw board and start there. So uh, I'm just going to do pygame dot draw dot rect, and I'm going to put it on the screen. And I'm going to say that these outlines will be black. And I'm going to put them uh, as the exact same rectangle as this rectangle. Do 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 do. 
And then I also want to make these, I think I'll do a width of three and I'm gonna make them rounded rectangles. So I'm gonna give them a border of three. And so even though these initial rectangles I wanna be solid, I'm still gonna make them rounded just so they match. And this should give every piece a black border, which is pretty cool. Actually, let's go ahead and give it a width of five and round them by five. I think that'll look better. Yeah, I think that looks pretty fun, kind of cartoony. Um, but maybe you're seeing score doesn't look that great now because it's black on what can be some dark colors. So let's go down to our score text and let's do what I think is kind of a cool, I call it like shadow box effect. Let's draw a white score over the black score and let's just move it a little bit to the right and a little bit down. And now you should have white text with black background. So score equals zero. Um, maybe we move it one more pixel to the right and one more down. That's a lot more than one pixel there. Okay. Score is equal to zero. That's pretty cool. Maybe it looks better with white behind it, honestly. Let's try that. We'll see. Uh, let's move it back there and let's move it up and to the left. So eight and three. Because I think black does pop more, especially on like the gray once it's done. Score equals zero. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, we'll leave it like that for now. Um, I also think we can improve the way the paddle looks and the way the ball looks with outlines. So let's go ahead to where we draw the ball. Do, 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 do. And actually I don't even need to say, I don't need to give these variables, we're not using them. So pygame.draw.rect screen, we'll make the outline black. And then again, we're gonna give this ball X and ball Y for the center. Center and then we will give it a width of three. This one doesn't need to be uh, as wide as the other ones. But actually, Pygame, we did dot, draw dot rect and we wanna do circle. Uh, okay, so we first need the radius, we'll do 10 and then we'll do three and that should be good. We should have a cool ring around our ball. Yeah, which looks pretty neat. Uh, if I hit some blocks real quick, yeah, I mean, that score is a little bit tricky to read, but we are doing a speed run, so I'm not gonna get too obsessed with the details. Uh, you know what, there, I think I actually saw the ball hit the bottom as it was coming downward, and there it hit the top as it was going upward. I do not want that to be able to affect this. Um, and it weirdly looked like it traveled through the side of it, so I may have messed up my left and right coll collision. Let me do the last outline that I think would look good. Um, I'm gonna create a little inner rectangle inside of the player. So let's say pygame.draw.rect and we'll put this on the screen. We'll make this white. It's gonna go inside of the player rectangle. So we'll take this whole thing, control C. And what we'll do is we'll make it a width of three, a rounded rectangle of three, and we will also say player X plus five, we'll move it to the right and we will move it down minus 18. And then we'll also say 110 and then we'll say 11. So let's see, that should give us a white rectangle that's basically inside our paddle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now let me play it a little bit, see if we can get those gameplay errors and maybe iron that out. Yeah, so it's definitely, it'll hit right on a corner and it'll kind of behave weirdly. Um, the good news is when it hits from underneath, which is definitely the majority of the game, that appears to be working pretty good. Um, but let's see, can I hit something from the side, please? Oh, that worked pretty well. It hit right on a corner and it got all three just once, which I think is what we want. Well, this is pretty fun and I think it looks pretty good and obviously Speed running it is not necessarily ideal, but uh, I think we got a pretty good product here. <laughs> now that looks pretty good. Okay, um, well, I'm gonna say one hour, uh, didn't even need the full hour, 52 minutes, and that looked pretty good. So it is done at 2.35. And I may, I don't think I wanna add, I don't think I wanna add any more functionality to this. It looks like it's working pretty good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't wanna do that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Um, if you would, can, if you did enjoy it, um, consider checking out uh, Tech with Tim's. I mean, he's not affiliated with the channel at all, but this was his idea. He is a huge Python channel. I am a little Python channel, so maybe consider dropping me a subscribe. I really could use the support, and I really appreciate all of the people who do comment, uh, subscribe, follow me, um, all sorts of things like that. I really appreciate you guys. It helps me out a ton. Uh, I love being able to make these kinds of tutorials and videos. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, what you'd like to see in a future video. Obviously, this is not necessarily a 100% uh, ironed out game with all the bugs fixed, but this is pretty darn close. Hope you had fun. Hope maybe you learned something. I will probably drop this code into a GitHub and leave the link in the description below, as well as probably a description to the inspiration video for this from Tech from Tim Tech with Tim's channel. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, until next time, I really appreciate it. Good luck with your projects, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.